I did a Google search last night in my hotel room, and I found a poll, ironically, in the website of a UMKC faculty uh, professor, uh, showing that the American people, when polled, by a margin of 78 to 7 percent, opposed the conviction of William Cowley in a court-martial. And the point I'm making is I'm actually concerned about how successful we could be in trying uh, war criminals in this country. I don't think you're likely to pick 12 jurors at random and, not, and, and get them all from that 7 percent group that, that favored that. Uh, there, there are a number of other things I'm, I'm not going to go on. But let's see. Uh, a November 29, 2005 Gallup poll found that Americans opposed the use of torture. But again, uh, even to get information from Al Qaeda, uh, by a margin of 56 to 38 percent. But the odds of getting at least one from that 38 percent on a 12-member jury are pretty high. And a good, lawyer, good defense lawyer playing video of the 911 attacks and emphasizing the defendant was merely simply trying to save American lives, I think is very likely to produce a series of hung juries, if not an acquittal. And this is a serious problem. Before there could be such a trial, of course, Congress would have to amend the Military Commissions Act, uh, and that in itself is likely to anger a certain percentage of the electorate, and that's maybe hard to do. If we're talking about Bush and Rumsfeld, I suspect there are a few million Democrats out there who would voluntarily or readily volunteer for the firing squad. But a Gallup poll last week found 27 percent of the American people still approve of the way Bush is doing his job. And a 12-member 12 12 jury, again, is likely to include some of them. Whether they would vote to convict him for trying to get information from terrorists to prevent another 911 is far from clear. I guess my bottom line is if we want international law to play an effective role in preserving peace and preventing war crimes, we must be willing to enforce it, including against our own people. It's my understanding that usually when we find war criminals in our military, we don't try them as war criminals. We try them for the substantive crimes of murder, rape, uh, whatever the, you know, all war crimes are violations of U.S. law in some other way. The key thing is that they be held accountable. I don't think we should prosecute low-level people uh, to, who, who may well have acted in good faith after having been told the Attorney General had made a decision that's legal. Uh, again, I know, you know, I, I think what we're talking about here, even including waterboarding, is what a colleague of mine calls torture light. That is to say, this is not the same thing as breaking bones, uh, you know, cutting off fingers, uh, you, know, uh, you know, some of the you know, you know, tre tremendous things that have happened in the past. If this were a case involving, uh, you know, s some of the more traditional measures of torture, uh, my views would certainly be different on this. Uh, but uh, I think we're, there, were, there, were, there certainly have been war crimes in Afghanistan and Iraq uh, that were not encouraged, ordered. We ought to throw the book at those people. Uh, every war we've ever had, we had war crimes. And war crimes in World War II, in Vietnam, and so forth. It's very important that we uphold this. But in this particular case, where we have people who are doing their job, don't know the law, and are told that the highest officers of the country have, have certified that what they're doing is legal, uh, I, have, I have problems with, with prosecuting them. Uh, one other thing I would mention, and that is, uh, it may be a little bit irrelevant to this, I don't know, but when Rodney King was beaten by Los Angeles police in 1991, like everybody else, I was outraged. But something that outraged me, I think, even more was to find out that he then sued the government and got $3.8 million of taxpayers' money. And my point is, normally in wartime, you don't allow the enemy to have access to your civil courts. And I think we ought to change the law to take away the right of detainees at Guantanamo and other people believed to be tied to Al-Qaeda to sue in our civil courts. I think we should handle this administratively by firing people or preferably criminally by putting them in jail, fining them, or if the war crime is egregious enough, I'm not against the death penalty. But the idea that somebody in good faith interrogate someone, holds them for several years and lets them go, and therefore they're going to get two or three million dollars in judgment, money that may well go right back to Al-Qaeda to support its activities, makes no sense to me. Let's punish the wrongdoers, but let us not give a windfall profit uh, to people who, may, even if we cannot prove it, may well be active members of Al-Qaeda. Thank you. Beer. 
Well, okay, we've got several um, important points to pursue here. Um, uh, Bob's last point about um, restraining the civil system is going to be very hard in this country since we invented this um, business of civil suits for huge damages and how you put that particular genie back in the bottle um, uh, I'd very much like to know. I think there are many uh, uh, Americans who would like to see that overall and in many other spheres I don't know how you do it but uh, because that is the law now the, the law in existence at the time that people uh, have suffered war crimes and human rights crimes and they are already in US courts we know that there is a civil suit against CACI the uh, contractor and others um, that are being pursued so this is one area where there seems to be some attempt to get accountability that is not forthcoming through the criminal system in this country and that's my first question I have one question for everyone and then I have a specific question for each of the panelists before we move to the to the group um, Philippe described an ongoing um, case of criminal investigation in the United Kingdom. We also know that uh, despite Bob's preference that the low-level soldiers not be held accountable, there are a handful of soldiers who are in prison, who have spent time in prison for activities at Abu Ghraib. Um, we know that there have been many other war crimes for violations of um, operations in uh, conflict in Iraq and Afghanistan most of those have resulted in acquittals but there have been trials of low-level people um, there have not been trials there no one has been found um, above the level above the rank of I think captain um, so uh, I'd like to ask each of the panelists if they know of ongoing criminal or civil trials in the United States or abroad with respect to these um, potential violations of international um, law. Let's we'll start with Philippe, in addition to the case you described to us. Well, the, the one case I want to mention is perhaps the most scandalous of all. It's the case of Maha Ara, the yes. Canadian Syrian, who was, as you know, uh, apprehended at JFK airport, uh, sent by the United States to Syria, where he was tortured for an extended period of time, I think there's no doubt that he was tortured, uh, and it was done with the knowledge uh, of the US uh, authorities. Uh, the Canadians had their part in that process, and just to underscore the point, uh, uh, the United Kingdom, its plane also has played its role uh, in positive engagement, shall we say, in some of these activities. It too has been involved, so this is not a US problem alone, this is a problem uh, many NATO countries have. Um, uh, in the case of Maha Ara, he then, uh, of course, was released. Uh, he has never been charged. There is no colorable evidence uh, that he has had any involvement with any of this uh, in a negative way uh, at all. In Canada, he received an official apology. Uh, he was the subject of a major inquiry, and he was paid $10 million in compensation, Canadian dollars. In the United States, he has been denied access to the courts, he's received no apology, he hasn't been paid a single penny, nor will he be even able to get access to a single court in order to make his case. That, I, I have to say, is a, an absolutely scandalous uh, situation, and so long as it persists, people will uh, have very real doubts about the ability of the legal system in the United States to do justice uh, in such circumstances.